You're watching E! News Direct. I'm Duduzi Leramila. Here are the stories we're tracking for you this evening. The prime interest rate is now 10.25%. That's after a Reserve Bank rate hike. The ANC asked this Western Cape leader, Marius Fransman, to step down while sexual harassment charges against him are investigated. Remember, you can have a say on any of our stories. Do find us on Twitter and Facebook. That's at E! News Direct. And our hashtags this evening, interest rate and Fransman. To that top story now. And times just got a little tougher. The Reserve Bank is hiking interest rates again. The prime lending rate is now 10.25%. The move comes as the central bank tries to keep inflation in check. It's come as no surprise. But it's not what debt burden South Africans want to hear. The Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Committee has decided to raise interest rates. Given the deterioration in the inflation outlook, the MPC decided to increase the repurchase rate by 50 basis points to 6.75% per annum, effective from the 29th of January 2016. This pushes the interest rate to 10.25%, making it tougher for cash-strapped consumers to pay off debt. It means that on a bond of a million rand, you'll be paying an extra 331 rand a month. Despite an economy on the rocks, the Reserve Bank says its hand was forced because of a worrying inflation outlook. Food prices remain a significant risk to the inflation outlook. The surge in agricultural commodity prices since early 2015 is beginning to impact on consumer food price inflation. And these pressures are likely to increase in the light of the persistent drought and the weaker exchange rate. The a shock development in Marius Fransman's sexual harassment allegations today. The ANC has recommended its Western Cape chairperson step down. The decision follows a meeting by the ruling party's National Working Committee. However, the ANC says it's temporary to allow police to complete their investigations. Fransman is accused of sexually harassing a woman while traveling to Rustenburg for the ANC's birthday celebrations earlier this month. He's denied the allegations. Allegations. ANC spokesperson Zizi Godwa says the decision was taken after lengthy consultation. I can confirm that the national officials of the ANC seized with the or responsibility to oversee the constitution of the African National Congress, having had and listened to representation from structures of the organization, referred the matter to the NWC. It was the National Working Committee that in its own wisdom it was important is that it makes that directive which has given to the provincial chairperson of the ANC in the Western Cape that it steps down to allow the criminal investigation until they are completed. But also, as you are aware, the matter has been brought before the, the Intercredit Commission and to allow also the Intercredit Commission to finalize this report. The Democratic Alliance is backing a Nelson Mandela Bay councillor accused of racism. Chris Roberts called a black councillor a baboon during a heated debate last year. A majority of the council voted today to give Roberts the boot, but the DA says he's already been punished. Councillors dressed to mourn what they say is racism in their midst. The DA member at the centre of the controversy, Chris Roberts, is not here to learn his fate. He is accused of calling UDM councillor Mongameli Bobani a Bobian. Bobani says he felt humiliated and degraded by the racist remark. We were expecting the DA to expel uh, Councillor Robert. In fact, like today, we were expecting the municipality not to do anything except to expel him. The majority of councillors agree with him. Councillor Robert is guilty of the offence based in the 20s, in the offence based on 26th August 2015 during a motion by the Chief Whip. Request the MEC to remove the councillor from office. But the Democratic Alliance is opposing the move. It says Roberts has already been sanctioned internally by the party. For now, Roberts remains a councillor. Sandy McCowan, Motherwell, Eastern Cape.
The controversy over a bursary that is only given to virgins continues. Tomorrow, the Commission for Gender Equality is meeting with the mayor of Utugela District Municipality who introduced the bursaries. The 16 young women selected have to undergo regular virginity tests or lose the funding. The mayor says the motive behind the bursary is a good one and she welcomes tomorrow's meeting. Find young girls that are very proud of themselves, that want to grow. In fact, uh, when, when you interview them, they will tell you that I've got goals to achieve. And until I achieve them, I, I want to remain a virgin. So it happens in the townships, in the villages. So us as the municipality is just to support them. And this is actually what the community said it, they wanted. Now, the number of minors killed underground each year is dropping, but even one death is one too many. This is the message from the Mineral Resources Minister, who announced today that 77 minors died at work last year. Working underground is one of the most dangerous jobs in South Africa. 77 mine workers were killed last year. More than 3,000 other miners were injured. Compared to 84 reported for 2014, and this translates to an improvement of about 8% year on year. 2015 saw the lowest ever fatalities recorded in the mining sector. Zwane says job losses and strikes played no part in lowering the death toll. He says it's due to government working closely with mines to improve safety. Our aim is to get to an ultimate goal of zero harm. The National Union of Mine Workers has welcomed the decline in fatalities and injuries, although it says it wants to see better care being taken of miners. However, rival union AMCU says mining companies are getting away with murder. These mines will continue slaughtering majority of black mine workers. As long as this uh, legislation are not transformed, the families of the disease, they cannot sue this mine. I mean, there is no obligation to these companies. Amku says it's going to fight to have legislation changed so that those responsible for the deaths of miners can be prosecuted. Lorenzo Temba, Pretoria. Quick look at world news now and activists in Norway are protesting against their country's plan to send 5,000 refugees back to Russia. Russia is refusing to let them return. At the same time, Sweden says it's going to expel up to 80,000 asylum seekers whose applications have been rejected. And Britain's Prime Minister is under fire for rejecting 3,000 Syrian orph orphans. Rather, He said allowing them in will make the UK a magnet for more refugees. The trial of former Ivory Coast President Laurent Gbagbo has started at the International Criminal Court. He's pleaded not guilty to crimes against humanity. The charges relate to a campaign of rape and murder during post-election violence in 2010. More than 3,000 people were killed in the Ivory Coast. Time now to see what's hot on social media and Gareth Edwards, a bit to sweet day for South Africans today as we get an interest rate hike, but the RAND reacting positively to the news. Yeah, and that is, I think, what so many people are looking forward to, the positive reaction to the RAND, but probably the most important hashtag in South Africa today is this. Uh, the interest rate certainly has gone up. I love that picture. You try and figure out what it means for you and I. Now, the advice being given by finance gurus on Twitter is this, simply Put away the credit card. It's Thursday, so throwback Thursday and hashtag Soweto Derby. Very few local sporting events setting social media alight this way. The Soweto Derby does, of course, on Twitter. And here's uh, Jimmy Tao versus Kabamba Musasa. A bit of a throwback Thursday on Twitter ahead of that. Then also we did this. We always love to ask soccer fans their opinions. We put up a Twitter poll this afternoon to ask about the Soweto Derby. So far we asked, is it going to be Orlando Pirates, going to be Kaiser Chiefs, or is it going to be a draw and so far it's Kaiser Chiefs with 38%. You can go and vote as well at E! News Direct on our Twitter account or you can look for E! News Direct on Facebook. By the way, if you've missed any part of tonight's show, you can always catch up by going to enca.com forward slash direct.
Welcome back. Money Matters Now and Lonman will continue to review its services by cutting jobs. The company says its labor costs already fell 194 million rand in the last three months of 2015. This after shedding some 5,000 jobs. Lonman is targeting to save some 700,000 rand in 2016. The platinum giant was crippled by a record strike in 2014. Rising costs and a platinum, a plunging platinum price rather. Platinum has has been on the decline for almost five years, falling 26% last year. It doesn't get any better in the manufacturing sector as Chevron is set to close its Cape Town refinery for several weeks in February. The refinery, which produces about 100,000 barrels a day, will be offline due to scheduled maintenance. In a statement, Chevron says it doesn't expect any supply disruptions. And with that, let's see how the markets perform today. Right, let's check in with the weather center now. Here's Candace. Good evening and welcome to the Weather Centre on Thursday, where light onshore winds bring in the possibility of light rain along the east coast on Friday. A ridging high brings in showers over the extreme northeastern parts and we'll see a thin band of thunderstorms form across South Africa's interior. Fine and hot as we head further west with a high fire danger warning over parts of the northern and western Cape. We're expecting some light morning rain for Durban and Richards Bay, but with a high of around 30 in the afternoon. Thunder showers are expected over the interior with highs in the upper 20s and low 30s. Thunder Showers will extend through to the extreme northern parts of the Eastern Cape with a hot day over the interior. We're expecting highs in the upper 20s along the coast with a sizzling hot end to the work week for the Western Cape. Maximums peak in the middle and upper 30s over the interior. Sunny and warm for George at 27 degrees and Cape Town topping 31 with a fine and dry end to the work week. We're expecting a dry day throughout the Northern Cape with lots of sunshine and a high of around 40 for Prisca and Uppington. You'll see that band of isolated thundershowers extend through the Free State in the mid 30s for Bloemfontein and Valcom. 33 degrees for Mahi King in the mid 30s for the rest of the weather stations, and we'll see isolated thunder showers for the northwest. A predominantly dry day for Limpopo, other than a few showers for Zanin at 31, Polokwane at 29 degrees. Showers are forecast over the eastern part of Mpumalanga on Friday, with a dry day as we head further west and a maximum of 30 degrees for Emilatlani, Sukunda, and Standerton. You'll also see a partly cloudy and dry day for Hartz on Friday, 32 degrees for Pretoria and a maximum of around 30 for Johannesburg, Soweto and Vereniging. On Saturday, we're expecting a hot day across South Africa with the possibility of thunder showers over the central parts. Sizzling hot weather is expected in the west as we head into Sunday with the possibility of light rain for George at 29 degrees and you'll see thunder showers from Uppington all the way through to East London. That's all from the Weather Centre for now. Have a good night. After the break, we take a trip down memory lane at the country's oldest horse race, the J&B Met. Welcome back. It's a celebrity schmooze fest of note. It is indeed. On Saturday, everyone who's anyone will be on show in their glamorous dress for the country's oldest horse race, the JNB Met. And while it's not expected to be any different this year, we take a walk down memory lane to see how far it's come. It was a time before we used phrases like throwback Thursdays and horse crush Saturdays. I just made that one up. But the ever popular horse racing event, the JMB Met, has certainly withstood the test of time and is still galloping strong. And so today, we're throwing it back. It may be the 39th year of the branded JMB Met, but the event dates back centuries and it's seen some amazing studs and fillies on and off the track. The Met dates back to 1795 when the Brits arrived here, where the garrison of the Cape, the soldiers in their best finery, raced their horses on the Greenpoint Common in front of the ladies of the day. 
nothing much has changed. 1803, it moved from the Greenpoint Common to Kenilworth. And while horse racing has become a serious sport throughout the years, so too has the evolution of fashion. I think one of the very interesting things about the Met over the years is that it's firstly contributed to a huge growth in the fashion industry. It's also a platform in which they can showcase their work. So fashion is always constantly evolving, it's always repeating itself, there's always kind of reinvention and there's always you know, an ode to the past and things that happened in the past. Come Saturday, more than 40,000 racegoers will descend on the Kenilworth race course to witness 18 of the country's finest horses race over 2,000 meters to the finish line. Tanya Neft, Cape Town. A reminder now of the day's top stories before we say goodbye. The prime interest rate is now 10.25%. That's after a Reserve Bank rates hike. The ANC asked this Western Cape leader, Marius Fransman, to step down while sexual harassment charges against him are investigated. And that's a wrap from the E! News Direct team. We are back tomorrow, same time, up next, Rhythm City. Remember, you can share your views with us. Do send us an email to enewsdirect at etv.co.za. You can, of course, just chat to us on Facebook and Twitter. And our handle is at enewsdirect. Until tomorrow night, have a fantastic evening. Bye-bye.